there, and it's certainly true there's an economic downturn. I just want to tell you that in the early 1980s, there were no jobs for university teachers, and I know a number of people who um, took their first university teaching jobs, some may even be among us, as contract work, and um, stuck with it, and maybe moved from one end of the country to the other to do that, and teach for a number of years that way, and eventually got a job, tenure stream or not, but they got jobs is my point, and it is a long haul. It seems, you know, like it's either make it or break it when you graduate, but it's not. There, there will be other opportunities that come along. Uh, lawyers in the late 80s, when I graduated from law and got called to the bar in 1985, the thing was, oh my God, you know, lawyers are not getting jobs the way they used to, the whole field has changed, blah, blah, blah. People got jobs. You had to, you know, I had to do a job I didn't want to do for a little while, but it was a very short period of time in the scheme of things. So, um, government in the 90s, huge recession, ray days, all kinds of ugly things, people are going to lose their jobs. Yes, some people lost their jobs, a lot of people didn't. They had to hire those people back on the inside or the outside because the work had to be done. So don't lose faith, uh, do, you know, go for it. And um, adapt, be prepared to learn, grow, and do trust the process. So this is just a little bit about changing the world. Since the talk was called Changing the World, I thought I should talk about it. So the image of a rocket comes to mind when I think about changing the world. So the first thing you hear is <clears throat> ignition. There's a lot of flame and fury and people get excited. For a while, nothing moves. The most tenuous part of the liftoff is when the rocket first slowly starts to move. So there's a lot of effort that has to go in. That's how change is in organizations. You have to generate a lot of energy at first. Nothing will happen and you'll become frustrated. Oh my God, you know, nobody gets it. These people won't talk to those people. They're all doing the wrong things. Then when you do begin to see a few changes, you can't relax because now that the thing's gotten off the ground a bit, that's when it needs the guidance. So remember I talked about the process with purpose? That's what's here. You need to know where you're going. You need to know where you're going to put that thing. It's got to have the guidance systems built in. And that's you. That's your brain. Where are we going with this? And you've got to use that. So it takes a lot of effort and perseverance, but in fact it happens over and over. Um, this doesn't appear to be the shuttle. I tried to get a picture of the shuttle on here to get the concept that we send these things into space. You know, again, when I, the first, uh, first space uh, mission to the moon was when I was in WLU in the summer course in 1969. I remember it very well. <laughs> um, now we, you know, it's like who knows when the last shuttle went to space and came back. Who, when, you know, the space station, how many people are living out there right now? Who knows? We don't even know. It's so not an issue. We do it over and over again. Change takes place over and over again. All of this effort, it does happen. We keep at it. So this is the famous Margaret Mead quote. It's about people. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It's the only thing that makes it happen. So I'm just reiterating what I've said. Know yourself. Remember that life is a journey. The destinations change. You have to be adaptable. Be open, but focused and purposeful. Commit to a course of action. You can change it later, but go for it. Your, no, your next job doesn't exist. You'll create it. And this is a concept. I, I have a son who's 22 going on 23, and I keep saying, if you want them to pay you more because you think you can do a better job, do the job and then you'll get paid for it. And it's a concept that doesn't, like, he still has this idea that they're going to say, yes, I can see you can do that job, so I'm going to pay you more, now let's see you do it. Do the job and then you'll get, in government this happened all the time. People would be doing the job. I did a deputy director's job essentially for two years before the director was able to say, okay, now you're a deputy director. You do the job and then you've created the job. The other thing is 
the way you do the job is always going to be different from the other person so that's why the job that you're going to do doesn't exist right now because it's going to be different when you do it you're you're an elite person you are going to have an education and you're going to have skills that are different from anybody else's and you're going to do it differently than anybody else and the final thing that I've only learned in the last couple of years and it's been a hard lesson uh, we spend a lot of time on strategic planning where I work and in many organizations I've been in. But this is what they teach in business school, so I don't know if there's anybody here from business school, but culture will eat strategy for lunch. Um, <laughs> it's all about the relationships. And that's not just for touchy-feely types, that is for everybody. If you can't build the relationships and you don't know how to make deals with people, it's not going to work. You can have the best strategy in the world. Nobody has any idea how to implement it. So remember that. You get a job and you get it put in a leadership position because you did a really good job at what you're doing. You know how to do something. You do it really well. And they say, right, you're going to now lead a whole other group of people to do it. The only trouble is you have no idea how to do that. Like motivating other people to do things, inspiring them, and enabling them is another whole skill. So learn that one. I wish somebody had given me that, you know, uh, along the way. And integrity is fundamental. Um, and this is really, again, just about living your values, making your actions consistent. What is it that we complain about with government, with politicians? They don't do what they say they're going to do. You know, so we say they lie. Um, they don't really grapple with that important question of how to follow our principles and what we believe in. Trust the process and trust yourself. <clears throat> I've already said all these things, so I'm not going to say any more about that. And um, I also have another whole thing, but I've been talking way longer than I was supposed to, so I won't. But um, Anna Quindlin, who's a, an author, made a, an excellent speech at a graduation ceremony about having a life that, um, you know, the one thing you're going to walk out of here with, many, many people will have the degree that you have, and many people will do the job that you're going to do. But what you have, and only you have, is custody of your life. And how you use it and how you make it is what's important. And learning to be happy and living with passion and with joy is what's really going to make it work. So those are my closing thoughts. Thank you. Do you have time for questions? On Any? <laughs> Inspire people to think differently. But you've got a, a, a 
Dana, I don't want to be too personal about this. I just met you 